Hello, Miss Scribble here. Doing things a little differently, so my setup's not exactly how it usually is, but I'm excited to show you how to make um, mittens using line and shape. And I'm gonna be using oil pastels to create this project. And you can follow along with me. It's very easy and very fun. I'm also gonna show you how to turn your mittens into wearable mittens. Woo, fun, fun. So let's get started. I have here a couple patterns I'm going to show you a little later, so I'm going to put that aside. To make our mittens, I'm just using a piece of white construction paper. You might notice there's a little little scribble there. It's because this was my scrap paper, and I think there's still some life for it. Life for it, in it. <laughs> life in it. So I want to use it. So this is just 9 by, I think, like 12 size paper. Big enough to fit in both my hands. And what you're gonna do is we're gonna trace the outline of our hands. Now, I'm making mittens and not gloves, so I only want to trace around my hand. And to make sure I do it right, I'm gonna use a pencil. So I'm gonna put my hand, left hand all the way to the left side of the paper and trace my hand into a mitten shape. And then when I'm done, I'll just close it up. Ta-da! And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And that's a little tricky because I'm not left-handed. So I'm gonna try my best, or you can get someone else to trace your hand for you. Ta-da! Now that I got two mittens, I'm ready to create my design. I've been inspired by a lot of other artists out there doing mitten creations. I've also been very inspired by the book The Mitten, which I will leave a link in the description of that book because it's one of my favorite winter books. And who doesn't love Bernie Sanders' mittens? <laughs> so I just wanted to create my own. I'm really excited to. We're going to be using line and shape to create our pattern. A pattern is something that repeats over and over again, like square, Circle, square, circle, square, circle, or circle, circle, square, circle, circle, square. So I have some ideas on this idea sheet of different lines and shapes I can use for my mitten. You can also use these shapes in lines as well. I got zigzag, scalloped, wavy, curly lines, and I got hearts, stars, and horseshoes, clovers, and blue moons. I don't have any pots of gold or rainbows and red balloons, but I have all these other shapes I can use. So I'm gonna create a pattern that repeats on one of my mittens. Let's do this one. I wanna start with like a wavy or a scallop one line at the bottom. And I'm just doing those waves. And then I'm gonna do maybe a couple horizontal lines. Ooh, let's get some shapes in here. I'm gonna do hearts. I'm gonna put three big hearts. I like it so far. This needs more lines in it. I'm gonna do square lines. Square zigzag lines. And then I'm gonna add, let's see, another horizontal line. Notice I'm continuing the pattern on my thumb as well because I want it to be the same. You don't have to do that. You can divide it up and make a different pattern on there. And then I'm gonna do another shape. Let's do triangles. I'm gonna put another triangle inside the other triangle, well, next to it in the spaces, just for fun. And then I'm gonna do, let's do a wavy line. And another wavy line. And then I'm gonna do a curly Q line. At the very top, I'll just do a little circle. Okay, I got my one pattern for my mitten, and guess what? Since I want to make these a pair, like I was going to buy them at the store, I'm going to make my other mitten the exact same. So I want to make my mittens to match. Now I have a matching pair, and now I'm ready to color. And I'm going to use oil pastels. Oil pastels are like crayons, but they have more of an oily texture to them. 
and I'm going to make sure whatever I color on this mitten, I'm going to make sure it matches this mitten. I'll show you in a moment. Are your color, mittens colorful as mine? Did you use only two colors? Did you use five colors? Did you use a million colors? There. So now what I'm going to do next is I decided I'm going to use watercolor to add a background for my mittens. So I just have my handy dandy watercolor set and some water. And I'm going to use a nice big paintbrush. And I want my background to be green. So I'm just going to dig right into the green paint. And I'm just activating it here with some water. And I just love crayon uh, watercolor resist. So I'm just going right over my crayons and my oil pastels with my green paint. I love watching the paint go inside the cracks and resist all the crayon I put down on my mittens. Be sure to share your drawings with me on my Instagram, Miss Scribbles Art Class, or you can email me your drawings. I would love to see them. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and see how it looks. So there we have it. I got my two mittens. Um, cut out with just some scissors and they're dry and I could glue these on another piece of colored construction paper or I can make them so I can wear them and I'm going to try and do that right now. So I got another piece of white construction paper here and I'm going to put these down and trace my mittens and then cut them out and then I'll show you the next step. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to use yarn and a hole puncher to make or sew your mittens into something that's wearable. And it's just for fun. I can stick my hand in this one that I just made. I'll show you how to make the one, make it for my right mitten. Or if you don't want, have any interest to, to play and put your hands in your mittens, you could stuff this with newspaper and sew it shut and you got yourself a little mitten sculpture. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. You're gonna take your mittens and you're gonna put them one on top of the other. Now you could do the same pattern again on the reverse side of your construction paper so you have the pattern on both sides, but I'm just gonna leave mine white. So I'm putting my mitten right on top of my other mitten. And it might help to put a small piece of tape over your mittens so they don't scoot all around and slide all over the place. Because what you're going to do is you're going to take a hole punch and you're going to put hole punches all around your mitten for the holes to sew your mitten together. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. I'm going to start at the bottom here and I'm going to pretend that I punched a hole here and scoot one over and actually punch through. Then I'm going to pretend punch and then punch the next one. We want to make sure we don't have holes right next to each other because we don't want these to tear. So I'm going to go ahead and punch all around my mitten here and then I'll show you how we're going to sew it. So pretend, punch, pretend, punch. Be, t be sure not to go too close to the edge because we don't want any tearing. Okay, I have my mitten all punched out. Now I cut myself a piece of white yarn and I also have one of these plastic needles. If you don't have one of these plastic needles, you can use a toothpick, you can use a paper clip, or you can possibly even use a pencil and just tape the yarn to the toothpick or pen, paper clip or pencil to sew your mitten together. So I have this long tail here and I have the short end right here. All we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, into that first bottom hole here and we're gonna be doing a stitch called the whip stitch. So I'm gonna pull it all the way until the tail is almost to the end there, like that. And then I'm going to put my yarn over the edge of my mitten and come through the back. 
and do the same thing. Just pull it almost tight there. And I'm going to turn it around and I'm just going to tie a knot. Now if you need help, ask someone around you to tie the knot for you. But I'm just going to take the tail, go underneath, and tie it once. Take the tail, go underneath that long piece of yarn and tie it twice. That way it doesn't come apart. I'm going to flip my mitten back over and I'm going to continue on. So I'm taking my stick or my needle and going through the back, pulling that through. Oops, I made a oops a daisy. So I got to take it out. The good thing about this is if you make a oops a daisy, you can just take it out and start it over. It's no big deal. I like to sew, so I'm okay with it. So I'm going to actually go through the, the front. I, I think I messed up a little bit. So I want to keep that whip stitch going. There we go. It should overlap your mitten. Over and through. Pull all the way until it's tight. Put my yarn over. So I should have gone through the front instead of the back. Then we'll be throwing our yarn to the back. But like I said, it doesn't matter. As long as your yarn is going over your mitten, as you pull it, it will stay together. And this is called the whip stitch. And if I'm wrong, y'all can email me and tell me that my stitch is called something else. <laughs> shame mittens white as snow. Okay, so when we get to the end here, we're going to flip it over and we're just going to slip our needle underneath that last little loop and just kind of pull it. And I'm just going to cut tail, pull it tight like that. And to make sure it's really staying, I'm just going to kind of take my yarn and put it through that last loop. And before I pull it tight, I'm just going to stick it through that loop and and that will make us a nice little knot. And I can cut that little tail a little shorter. And there we have it. Here's my little wearable mitten. So now I can put my little hand in there, like so. And there I have it, my little mitten. Now, if you're having trouble, um, like mine popped open, I think I made my little mitten too, the opening too small. So be careful when you're tracing your mitten that you don't cut it too small. You have to make sure you're able to fit your hand through. So I would keep it pretty big. And that's it. Now I have a pair of mittens that I can go and read the mitten book with. That's all for now. Happy scribbling. Thanks for joining me. Bye.